I know many here are following me and watching my content because they are also trying to get into the field. And that's quite understandable. Uh, data science is a very promising and fulfilling field, I have to say. However, um, five years in, uh, starting from the time I started to learn data science, I found that there is, there is a lot of not so good realities of being a data scientist that I've experienced. And in this video, I'm going to be sharing with you five sad, or uh, to put it mildly, five not so good ash realities of um, being a data scientist. As a data scientist, you are always learning. You see, the learning never stops and that can get really tiring. Five years ago, when I started to learn data science, um, there were large emphasis on traditional machine learning approaches like linear regression, SVMs, trees, etc. Basically, that was what everybody knew. That was what was required. That was the intent. If you knew that, that was enough. While I'm not saying that those are out of date, I'm just saying that right now there are bigger and newer possibilities in the field and somehow um, you can claim that oh I knew I know traditional ML five years ago and I'm not going to learn about LLMs or RAGs etc and I'm just going to stay with my traditional um, machine learning knowledge so you actually find yourself having to play catch up a lot of times you know some years ago I took for example a data engineering bootcamp while being a data scientist on the job you know because i just wanted to be able to use the skills of being uh, of knowing how to build LT ltl etl pipelines set up automations you know event triggers in the airflow for example and just so that i can um, improve my arsenal and be able to stand out in the job market and i'm just giving all of these examples where you always have to keep learning where you always have to catch up because the field is constantly evolving new research is being made things are being brought out new and you always have to be able to learn you always have to be ready to take a new course to take this um, bootcamp to take that to, to basically make sure that you keep learning reading articles implementing stuff so um, if you are not the type that really like to get yourself disturbed about learning data science um, might not be for you the second thing I want to talk about is the fact that you have to deal with unrealistic expectations. You know, this is very important to know um, because if you know, then you will know how to deal with it better when you experience it. A lot of times you will work with people who don't know anything about data science or machine learning. All they know is basically that you are this guy who has been hired, uh, a sort of magician who has some coding skills and they can basically tell you anything they need and you will just abracadabra whatever machine learning model it is and then you'll get it done oftentimes you will have to be patient to explain things to people again and again and even sometimes possibly be patient with them not even understanding it at the end or you have to be patient until they understand it depending on their role in the company by which in which you work so if you are not an excellent communicator and you can't explain your processes very well, you can't explain your results, you can't explain your ideas to non-tech people or non-data people to understand, you might, being a data scientist might be a wrong idea for you. For example, it could also be that you are trying to build an ETL pipeline, a data engineering pipeline, and you have to be able to explain to the, your audience and say, this is what I need from you. I need you to feel this at this point in time so that you can trigger the pipeline to load the data. And you have to be careful to explain everything in detail uh, and deal with the unrealistic expectations that they have of you. If you've listened to this point, make sure you like this video, hit the subscribe button because that would make me a very happy man. It would also make the YouTube algorithm to recommend this video to others. Now, my second point leads me to my third point. You see, tech skills are overrated. For a lot of newcomers into the data science field, there's a lot of emphasis on learning SQL, learning Python or R. In fact, there's the argument about which one is better, Python or R, learning statistics, mathematics, the basics of machine learning, learning visualizations with Power BI or Tableau, etc. Um, why those are important? You actually find that on the job as a data scientist, those won't be the key skills you will need to to excel on your job and i'm using the word excel deliberately now a lot of other skills like knowing how to ask the right questions to your stakeholders stakeholder management 
project management with tools like Jira or Notion, writing proper documentation, being able to collaborate, being able to explain what you're doing in simple terms to others, being able to explain your analytical findings to the business and explain how it helps the business make better decisions. And I tell you, nothing absolutely prepares you for that, especially if you are getting to start on a more senior role. You can't just rely on your test skills alone. You have to be able to learn and pick up the skills quickly because this will matter when you want to get promoted. Now, to the fourth point, there are usually no well-defined to-dos. You see, the problem with the data scientist position is you will notice that your job basically circles around the whole data landscape. Sometimes you will find yourself setting up data pipelines, which is typical of a data engineer, or you will find yourself building dashboards in Tableau or Power BI, or maybe Luca Studio, which is the job of a data analyst. Sometimes you will be expected to build machine learning models, which is what a machine learning engineer would do. Um, and depending on the company you work at, you might just be expected to be a generalist and not a specialist, which maybe you don't want to do or you don't like to do uh, of course in large tech companies like google facebook amazon and the likes microsoft and the likes um sure i'm sure that things are well defined but but the truth is how many people will work at a fan company if you work at a startup you most likely will find yourself being a generalist so this is something you, you should be well prepared to experience um it might be tiring as your job details keep changing from one position to the other. Um, for me, I like it uh, because I lead a data team and of course I want to have an overview of what everybody in my team does. So I'm very interested in data engineering as much as I'm interested in data science and machine learning and data analytics as well. Before I go to the last one, I'd like to hear from you what has been your own sad experience being a data scientist and if these tips were helpful for you let me know in the comment section now to the last one um the sad reality of becoming a data scientist <laughs> you see the job market right now is crazy i had an experience i was trying to hire for a data professional into my team and the same role was advertised sometime uh, last year and it took us about one week for us to get about 100 applicants and then we had to close the role down um this same this year we put up a similar rule and in 24 hours we already had over 100 applicants that tells me wow this is crazy there's a lot of data courses out there people are paying a lot of money to take these courses really trying to get into the field and so that means that the competition is really fierce of course i tried to speak with people to build projects to stand out to try to master the basics to stand out in fact i have a video where i shared about what are the best ways for you to how i learned data science and how i got a job after six weeks you find the video here you can watch it but it really tells me that it's difficult to get into the field right now and i can imagine for a lot of people you know grinding learning trying to become a better version of themselves and really trying to get into the field but they just can't and um, i think i think it also shows the dark side of being a data scientist of course like i said if you have experience it becomes relatively easier for you to get a job but for a lot of people who are trying to get into the field right now they don't have experience the question then begs samson how do i get a job without experience how do i build experience without a job in this video right here, I share three tips of how you can build data experience without having a job and that can help you then get a job in the long run. Thank you for watching. Make sure you subscribe and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.